This is Tripedal, our three-legged, fully 3D printed walking robot. And it's doing a nine sequence step. That means nine positions for every step it takes. And we ran over a million randomized simulations and got those nine sequences all the way down to four. Comment something below for your chance to win our fully assembled 3D printed robot arm desk buddy. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get started. I used Python's PyBullet to run the simulations. It's actually easier than you think it would be. It's really just two files, but I did have to update code on my robot. Out of the million simulations, this is the best result we got. The simulations all used randomized positions, and later on at the end, I'm gonna tell you why we used random simulations and not machine learning. And now we get to implement it manually to the robot. Nice. There are nine servos, which means out of 180 degrees, there are 198 quintillion possible positions for the robot to be in. We do until it down to four. So I'm going to use this random step function to limit a position by 20 or 40%, depending on what motor it is. And I have all the left side motors equal to the right side motors. This way we're not having the robot turn left or right, we're just trying to walk in a straight line. You can read the docs to see the, the basic physics principles of this Python script. But essentially what we're doing is we're getting the x distance, which is how far off it tracked from the center line. The y is how far it was from the start to where it finished its second step, because each simulation is running one step twice. Fall equals true if anything other than a foot touches the ground, and time is in how many seconds does it take to finish two steps. Now I just have the robot spawning in the middle of the floor. I'm gonna update the code so it fixes where the robot spawns and saves to the database actual simulations. And it's a little bit more jumbled up, but you can see these are all different values. The other file that actually makes the robot is called a URDF. It's an XML format and it stands for a Unified Robot Description Format. It's actually way easier than it looks. You can think about links as objects. They have inertial, which is the origin position, its mass, and the inertia. Collision, which is its physical capabilities in the 3D space. And visual is just the graphical representation of how we get to look at it in the 3D space. And then links can have joints, which connect two objects together. And joints will have a type of movement it can do. All of Tripedal's joints are revolute, except for his linear knee, which is prismatic, or up and down. And that's it, it's all just links and joints. Tripedal's being fitted for new shoes. You may have noticed, especially if you've been following this project, the hard PLA bounces off the floor a lot. So to dampen it, I'm using self-adhesive closed foam sheets for the bottom of his feet. And this is just a hack. I do like this foam and it is water resistant. So I'll end up making shoes for him and I'll probably be made of similar, if not the same material. Let's go through the four positions. The hardest one is the second position where it lands on its outer legs. And basically the outer feet are like little stubs. The next version of Tripedal is gonna get way bigger feet. It came in too hard and would fall forwards, so I dialed it back a bit, and most times it wasn't strong enough. But I learned that it was all about in the ankle to get it to flip forward, and it would actually reliably balance on its front two outer legs really well. The third position was a lot easier. It's just swinging the center leg forward. But it was still important to get it perfect because the fourth position of swinging your arms back forward and standing up is no joke. That would be like you trying to walk around without swinging your arms back and forward. You're gonna feel way out of balance. So I gotta get this perfect. We'll do it one more time and make sure it plants on the center leg.
Nice. Man, getting it to stand up was honestly harder than I thought. It took me about an hour to figure this out, and it was by accident. I couldn't figure out why it would keep falling backwards. It wasn't until I applied the full loop when I realized the outer feet are getting in the way. It's jotting backwards when it's resetting. So I'll just swing the outer feet in the exact opposite direction. There was nothing wrong with the legs. It was just the feet the whole time. But that means it was done. Those are just the four sequences and you just run them on a loop. So let's put it all together. Side by side, you can see this four sequence step is way more efficient than the one at the beginning of the video. Nice. As of this recording, one year ago, the first tripedal prototype was assembled. Soon after came baby tripedal and then mini tripedal. But we're going to have to keep going bigger if we want to have a real walking robot project. So we're going to have to add sensors, maybe another motor or two to this, and a lot more hardcore coding and machine learning. What I'd like to do is actually set up a training zone down here so we could still run randomized simulations but actually test them in reality and put this tripedal on a gantry. So when he falls over, he gets picked back up and put back to work. But it'll be a bigger version with sensors on the bottom of its feet and even IMUs that can track what position it's facing, kind of like your cell phone. To support this project, like and subscribe. And don't forget to comment if you want to win this little robot arm. Hacker Twins out.